anger in the Proverbs of Solomon. When we looked at the commands of Christ concerning anger, we discovered that anger is the root of murder and we must take it seriously. He said, you've heard that it was said to an older generation, do not murder and whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I say to you that anyone angry with a brother will be subject to judgment and whoever insults a brother will be brought before the council and whoever says fool will be sent to fiery hell. So then, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your gift. Reach a, a, an agreement quickly with your accuser while on the way to court or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the warden and you'll be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you'll never get out there until you have paid the last penny, Matthew 5, 22, 26. For not everyone murders, but everyone has murder in his heart. And that murder comes out every time we feel anger toward others. The more we express that anger, the closer we get to the fires of Gehenna. Paul told the Ephesians, be angry and do not sin and do not let the sun go down on the cause of your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. So when anger occurs inside, unless we deal with its cause, the devil will have an opportunity to make us do something unwise and harmful to ourselves and others on the outside. Here in Proverbs, we have a set of foundational truths about anger. Wisdom is a means of controlling anger. We see that in uh, Proverbs 19.11, a person's wisdom makes him slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense. The goal of wisdom is to prepare for wise choices. And one of the most important choices is how you are going to react to what happens in your life or the world around you. You can react in such a way as to bring glory to yourself or shame on yourself. Those are the two options. When foolish people are offended or feel attacked because of something other people say or do, they respond in anger immediately. Wise people may feel just as offended or attacked, but they choose not to react in anger. Even if they feel anger, they keep their cool, which gives them a chance to consider why they feel the way they do. To control our feelings, we must be able to understand them. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool lets fly with all his temper, but a wise person keeps it back. Both the wise and the foolish have tempers. Even Jesus has a temper. It's not a sin to feel angry. A sin comes when we allow that anger to take over our actions. Wise people do not lash back in an attempt to get revenge for how they feel. They do not let their tempers fly. A flying temper is a dangerous thing to both the offender and the offended. Wisdom also warns you to avoid angry people. We see that in Proverbs 22, verses 24 to 25. Do not make friends with an angry person and do not associate with a wrathful person, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. We tend to pick up actions and attitudes from those we hang around. That is one reason that we should be cautious about those we choose to befriend. Some friends are traps. They trap us in lifestyles that eventually harm us. We should love everyone, but that does not mean we put everyone in a position to influence us. We need to love angry people from a distance. Proverbs 29, 22, an angry person stirs up dissension and a wrathful person is abounding in transgression. If we allow angry people to influence us, we will find ourselves disagreeing with and separating ourselves from more and more people. That is dissension. 
but we will also find that we break more and more of God's rules. That's transgression. The Proverbs warns us that having angry friends is costly. There are several advantages to controlling your anger. Proverbs 14, 29 points one out. It says, the one who is slow to anger has great understanding, but the one who has a quick temper exalts folly. Just as wisdom can keep us from uncontrolled anger, self-control demonstrates great understanding. But having a quick temper exalts folly because it makes others think that reacting quickly in anger is how to deal with your problems. It's not. Proverbs 15.1 says a gentle response turns away anger, but a harsh word stirs up wrath. We all know how quickly a harsh word can lead to anger on all sides. That is not what we want to do. We want to turn away anger, even among others who are less wise. We need to learn the practice, to practice the wise art of a gentle response. Proverbs 15, 18 says a quick-tempered person stirs up dissension, but one who is slow to anger calms a quarrel. Again, everyone has a temper, wisdom has a temper, and there are times when it is wise to display it. Think of Jesus in the temple. But look at what Jesus did regularly in the same context. He went to the temple and taught there regularly without expressing his anger. He had a temper, but he was not quick-tempered. He was slow to anger, and that enabled him to speak wisdom into the lives of others as they quarreled. He calmed quarrels as well as the sea. A wise person chooses to calm quarrels instead of inciting them. Proverbs 16, 32, better to, slow, to be slow to anger than to be a mighty warrior. And one who controls his temper is better than one who captures a city. Mighty warriors capture cities, but we need people who are slow to anger to lead cities. We need people who live wisely and display the fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control. God bless you. Thank you.